Behold, the dwelling of God is with mankind. He will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O God, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Praise to the blessed and holy Trinity, one God who gives us life, salvation, and resurrection. Alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. Alleluia. To us a child is born. Come let us adore him. Alleluia. Come let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. With thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to the Lord with psalms. For you, Lord, are a great God and a great ruler above all gods. In your hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are also yours. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 72. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son that he may rule your people righteously and the poor with justice, that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people and the hills in righteousness. Let him defend the needy among the people, rescue the poor and crush the oppressor. May he live as long as the sun and moon endure from one generation to another. Let him come down like rain upon the mown field, like showers that water the earth. In his time, may the righteous flourish and let there be an abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. May he rule from sea to sea and from the river Euphrates to the ends of the earth. May his foes bow down before him and his enemies lick the dust. May the kings of Tarshish and of the Isles pay tribute, and the kings of Sheba and Seba offer gifts. May all kings bow down before him, and all the nations do him service. For the king delivers the poor who cry out in distress, the oppressed, and those who have no helper. He has compassion on the lowly and poor, and preserves the lives of the needy. From oppression and violence, he redeems their lives, and precious is their blood in his sight. Long may he live, and may there be given to him gold of Sheba. May prayer be made for him always, and may they bless him all the day long. May there be an abundance of grain in the land, growing thick even on the hilltops. May its fruit flourish like Lebanon. And may people flourish in cities like the grass of the field. May the king's name remain forever and be established as long as the sun endures. May all the nations bless themselves in him and call him blessed. Blessed are you, Lord God, the God of Israel. You alone do wondrous deeds. And blessed be your glorious name forever. And may all the earth be filled with your glory Amen. Amen. Give glory to God, our light and our life. Oh, come, come let us worship and the praise. praise. Let us pray. O God of light and peace, whose glory shining in the child of Bethlehem 
and still draws the nations to you. Dispel the darkness that shrouds our path, that we may come to kneel before Christ in true worship, offer him our hearts and souls, and return from his presence to live as he thought. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. For thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them, the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together. A great company, they shall return here. With weeping, they shall come. And with consolations, I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water, in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd a flock. But the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion. And they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry, and will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The reading ends here. And a reading from the Gospel of John. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was born, because he was before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. And the law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God it is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. So today we celebrate the 12th day of Christmas in the Christian calendar. It is the final day of the Christmas season, uh, which is a relatively short season. <laughs> squeezed in between the advent, the uh, preparation of uh, the birth of Christ and the epiphany when the uh, wise men arrive uh, after following the star. Some traditions in this, uh, uh, some tr a tradition that is sometimes done by folks on at this time is, and if, if Tracy, uh, if she can back us up one slide, then later we can, you know, uh, is the, the the chalking of doorways where you, the, the year is announced with the letters C, M, B in between. And there's a little plus sign in between each of those. And I just had a little uh, graphic of that. You can see there on the screen there that people will chalk above their doorway. Um, some folks 
We'll say that those letters will stand for uh, the names of the wise men, Caspar, Melchior, Melchior and Balzar. And um, another, uh, another uh, explanation of it is that it stands for the Latin Christus Mansi Omnem Benedictas, may Christ bless the house. And it is a blessing this, um, that some folks will put, the, it's not as common in the United States, but the, um, that many other folks will uh, around the world that they will chalk above the doorway and that that is a part of this 12th night, this final waiting for the wise men to, to uh, find the Christ child. It's not a literal 12 day journey from wherever the wise men began their journey to the manger bed in Bethlehem. It is the historical understanding that a period of time has passed between Jesus' birth and arrival in Bethlehem and the wise men's arrival. The 12th day of Christmas reminds us that time goes on, that the story of Jesus does not stagnate with his cherubic face gazing up from a manger cradle, and that the promise that was fulfilled in the birth of Mary's son was long anticipated and very much celebrated by those who watched and listened. And oh, 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 how they waited. On the 12th day of Christmas, we continue to sing and to dance and to make merry with angels and shepherds and animals and relatives. And now these exotic strangers coming from a foreign land. And what a party it really must have been. Gospel of John points us to the word just as the writer of Genesis does, that God swept over a formless void and pronounced light, and bam, there was light. And John reminds us that God was in the world and that the world came into being through God, but that the world in its wounded and sinful state did not recognize that its light had come, even though God's glory had been so bountifully revealed. Shakespeare wrote a play called The Twelfth Night, and it follows the basic pattern of most of his comedies. The pattern tends to run like this. Part one, there is a normal state of affairs that is not ideal. A duke or a king has been usurped, or lovers are not allowed to be married. In part two, everything is turned even more upside down for a brief period of time, as certain characters don a disguise, become enchanted, or get lost. In part three, a revelation occurs, an epiphany that dispels the disguise or enchantment and resolves not only the problems of part two, but also those that have long existed in part one. The world in which the play exists is cleansed, orderly, and joyful by the end. Truth, charity, and justice have triumphed, and the actors take a bow. The Twelfth Night, Epiphany Eve, Feast was usually the high point of the Christmas season and it featured a lot of drinking and eating and caroling as well as an inverse of the normal order of things. And owners did menial work such as turning the spits and anyone who came to the feast could be appointed Lord of Misrule, directing the night's revelry and bossing everyone around for an evening. It is not order and hierarchy we mind so much as someone else's in perfect order and hierarchy being imposed on us. The fact is that whether our society is a well-oiled machine or positively anarchic, it is part of a crazy topsy-turvy world where we often feel helpless before chaotic forces that we can't control. There certainly is beauty in order, in order, and order in this world, but there is a lot of disorder in it too. The world, in other words, is always upside down. It's part of the reason that that play, The Twelfth Night, still resonates with people who have never even heard of the feast that's named after it. Yet the feast and the comedies both dramatize the same thing. The fact that the world is already a pretty crazy place and that all structures have a bit of chaos about them it seems a bit arbitrary. Justice often prevails in this world. Bad people are often rich and good people are poor. Society commends virtuous things that are vile. 
and forces its inverted standards upon others. Sacrifice and honest achievement are met with ingratitude and envy. And the real need is often not answered, is often answered not with charity, but with glib self-satisfaction. It's always been this way. Yet we should mourn our part in this mess. In a way, to enjoy an upside down feast is not so much releasing pressure so that peasants don't rise up this year as it is telling the truth about ourselves and our society. But in a way it is also wishing for and delighting in a new kind of order that may on its face feel like disorder. This seeming chaos that attended Christ and his followers who turned the world upside down and brought true order to multitudes, starting with their hearts. That's not to say we give our minds and souls up to chaos, that we stop fighting it, indulging our flesh or ego, but it is to say that we rejoice, that we refuse our own petty denial of joy. Because of course it is when the true king shows up and removes his carnival disguise that the false kings are revealed as false. And so it is appropriate that on the 12th night that it precede epiphany, that revelation is not merely a reversal of carnival misrule, but rather its culmination. Christ reveals himself first to those who joined his little odd band of misfits and outcasts. It is in the mass of the 12th night when we are no longer righteous in our own eyes, that God may begin to fill our vision in new ways to draw us up to the true feast. And so we travel with the wise men, kings drawing closer to the king, the wise approaching wisdom itself. They and we are dethroned and made into fools just as we are in the folly of all Christmas for it is only in this way that our morning is truly turned into dancing. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, God has, God spoken, has spoken to us, to us by, by the Son. In my continuing quest to find ways for us to sing, today we will sing the refrain of the Gospel Canticle. I'll sing it one time now and then invite you to join me a second time and then we'll repeat it throughout the uh, mechanical as you'll see it marked there. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Through your holy prophets, you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our lives. 
In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in the darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be, be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. You are invited to share your personal prayer petitions at this time. Radiant morning star, you are both guidance and mystery. Visit our rest with disturbing dreams and our journeys with strange companions. Grace us with the hospitality to open our hearts and homes to visitors filled with unfamiliar wisdom, bearing profound and unusual gifts. Amen. Amen. <laughs> And I thought we could sing the, uh, at least the final verse of the 12 days of Christmas. I don't know how, uh, how enduring, <laughs> if you're up to all 12 of them or not. But I thought we could at least, we could at least maybe sing the final verse and, uh, and your, uh, then the, your list of, uh, of uh, different uh, things, that, you know, all the different categories are there for you, so. On the twelfth day of Christmas, my true love sent to me twelve drummers drumming, eleven pipers piping, ten lords a leaping, nine ladies dancing, eight maids a milking, seven swans a swimming, six geese a laying, five golden rings. Four golden birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.
God bless the master of your home, likewise the mistress too, and all the little children that round the table grew. Love and joy come to you, and to you your wassail too, and God bless you, and bring to you a happy new year. God bring you a happy new year. Amen. Amen.